Hello everybody and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. Today I'm going to introduce you to the new Minecraft launcher and show you how to use its profile editor for storing the game data in custom locations and running mods. But first of all let's go through all the new features added and the new interface. So here you can see on the right hand side we have the profile selection. This is pretty straightforward, you can select a profile which has different information about the game and it will display here its version and its status so this one is up to date. And then we have a button for new profile and edit profile as well and then below that we have service status. So this shows us the multiplayer and login servers that are hosted by Mojang and it tells you if they're online or offline so if ever you're trying to connect to your favourite multiplayer server and you can't get on you can come here and check and see if these are offline or online and then that way you'll know where the problem lies and then down the bottom here we have a play button to launch the game and a logout button to log out of our Mojang account so over on the left hand side here we have these different tabs at the top you can see we have update notes this is what was displayed in the previous launcher then next to that we have the development console so this displays a load of stuff to do with Java and when you log on to a server it will display the IP address of that server in here and it will also display any chat that is happening when you're logged into that server. Then here we have the profile editor, we're going to come back to that in a moment and we're going to take a look at this local version editor now. So we have all the different jar files that are stored on the computer, it will tell us the name of them, what type they are, when it was released and when it was last modified and how many libraries it uses. So libraries are pieces of code that are outside of the Minecraft jar that the game uses when it's running so it just tells you how many of those are running there that's something you don't ever have to worry about as well and then over on the right hand side we have sync status so this is going to tell us if things are hosted on our computer like this one is local only so the only place you're going to find that is on your computer and then this one says up to date with remote which means you have the same jar file on your computer as they do on the Mojang servers and there will be another status that can be displayed here as well which is update available from remote so that means that there is an update available from the Mojang servers and the one that you have on your computer is out of date. So you may also notice that I have some snapshots here and these are local only and the reason why is because Mojang actually cut off the support for a snapshot if they release another one in the same week so you can see here that 18 A and B they are local only so we can't get an update from the Mojang server however 18 C is available so if ever they release another snapshot during the week it's only the latest one for that week that will be available and so as well as all of this there are a couple of things under the hood that you can't actually see um, the Minecraft launcher is now self-updating so that means when a new update is available it will update itself and you don't have to ever download anything like an exe file again and as well as that there is also a new authorization system that means that your password is not stored on the machine anymore it uses a new type of security system so that you don't have to store your password on the computer meaning that your Minecraft account is that much more safer so now I'm going to show you how to use the profile editor. This is how you can store the game data in a custom location and also run a custom jar file as well. So if we go here, this shows us all of the profiles that we can select down the right hand side here. You can see that it tells us the, the name, the version and also the username. So you can sign these into different Mojang accounts. Now I only have two, you can see this one is signed into a Sumovoid and that means when I use that profile I can launch into a different Minecraft account. So if we right click here you can see we can add a profile, we can copy and we can delete them as well but to edit them we have to click on the button over on the right hand side so we have to select the different one that we want to edit over here. So you can see here I have some mods installed, I have the latest version, I have 1.5.2 and then we have Optifine, Spheres, Mod and MBT Editor so I'll be showing you how to add those in a moment but first of all let's have a look at how we edit them. We simply click on this button and then we're displayed with a load of information here. So we've got the profile name, that's pretty straightforward. We have the game directory. So this is where you can point to where you want the game to be installed. And that means your save data, your screenshots and things like that will all be stored in this folder that you type in here. And then you can tell it what version to use. So you can see all of those different jar files that were displayed in the local version editor appear here as well. And so what I'll show you to do is how to add these as well in a moment. And then below this we have some advanced stuff, you can see here that we have executable, that means you can select a different Java EXE to run the game, so this is version 7, 
Um, let's say you had number 6 installed as well and you wanted to use that, you could directly point it to use version 6. But this stuff is advanced and not recommended to tamper around with unless you know what you're doing. Now JVM arguments means it's going to launch the jar file with some extra information attached to it that tells it to run the game slightly differently. And a good example of this is that I think it's actually what this command does is it applies a certain amount of RAM to Minecraft so this one could possibly be applying one gigabyte although I'm actually thinking that's not what it does uh, but this is something that you shouldn't tamper around with unless you know what you're doing however I am going to put a link in the description box to a list of these different arguments that can be applied to the Java just in case you want to see um, how you can customize the game further so when you edit a profile you'll stay logged into the account that that one is assigned to however if you create a new profile which is what we're going to do now let's do that uh, you can see here we are not logged in so when we select this one on the side we then have to log in down the bottom and then that account will be assigned to that profile and that means that you'll always be logged into that account on that profile so now I'm going to show you how to add a custom jar file to the Minecraft launcher. So this means if you have a modded jar with you installed something like Optifine or an MBT editor then you can use that jar file and add it to the Minecraft launcher. So that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do. So up the top here you need to type percent app data like this and then it will take you to this folder here where Minecraft should be at the top. So if you click on that folder it will then take you into this one right here which is where I was a moment ago. So you want to go to versions down the bottom here. You'll see all of the different ones that are displayed here. We've got some custom ones that I've added. That one has the spheres mod. This one has an MBT editor built in. And the way that you do this is you simply create a new folder and you give it a name. Now it's important that this doesn't have any space bars in. So let's call this um, custom dash mod like that. And so inside here we need a jar file and another file which is this one right here, .json, so you can go into any other one of these and simply copy that file. Now we're going to copy the jar file as well, however that would actually be replaced by uh, the modded file, so we're going to go to our custom mod and we're going to paste that in here and we'll rename this one to the same name as our folder, so it's going to be custom-mod like that and of course this would actually be your modded jar and just not one that's renamed and then we'll take this file which can be copied from any other one of those folders and we will do the same thing we're going to rename it to custom mod then we're going to open this in a notepad so I'm going to drag this into there and you'll see there is a ton of information here don't worry about all of that all you need to do is look at this first bit here we've got ID and then a label and we need to change this label to the same thing again custom dash mod. Then you can save that file and close it and that's all you need to do. So now that I've reloaded the launcher I've opened up the local version editor tab and you can see here that the custom mod is now here. Now because it's a snapshot jar that I copied it's appearing here as a snapshot but if we go to edit profile over on the right hand side then all you need to do to run your custom mod is go down here and select it now as I said because it's a snapshot it's going to appear first in the list as a snapshot there and you can see that releases are further down the list. So let's go and select it and then you would do save profile and then when you launch the game you're going to be using your custom jar file. So that is the new Minecraft launcher. It is pretty epic if you ask me. I personally have been using multiple Minecraft copies for a long time and this just makes everything so simple and easy to do and I'm really impressed with this. And remember to say thank you to Mojang and Dinnerbone for this because this is an awesome launcher and an excellent addition for the game. Uh, but that is it for this video and if you've enjoyed it, please do give it a like and help support the channel. But other than that, thank you for watching and I will catch you next time.